Enjoy this free preview from My Outdoor TV. With the largest library of outdoor shows, we are the home of the adventurous, the champions, the legends. My Outdoor TV. Try us free. When you hear people talk about Charleston, South Carolina, fishing isn't necessarily the first thing that comes to most people's mind, but I'm not most people. You talk about Charleston, I immediately think about fishing and the fishing opportunities that Charleston and the surrounding areas has to offer. The term low country immediately makes me think about the salt marshes, the live oaks with their sweeping branches, the Spanish moss, the farms. You know, that's what I think about when you use the phrase low country. There's one thing about South Carolina, two things about South Carolina, three yeah. things, four yeah. things, there's a bunch of things, but <laughs> between good food and and uh, good fishing and good people. Shimano and Z-Man are both here, which is amazing. Yeah, right? Yeah, for me, it's great. I'm gonna see them this week. And... Well, this is, um, that's the same place we put in last time I was here. Yeah, we're on a very similar tide today. Um, warmer weather, uh, a little different time of year. Well, yes. Let's see what happens, but the clouds are rolling in. It's nice and calm, so yeah. So last time, I think you liked that top knot. Oh man. I mean, I got a couple different colors, but here's a brand new one for you. Okay. It's got a little chartreuse belly Thank on you. it, and but I've got black and gold. My old ones have a lot of scars. I saw that. You with me. <laughs> I have a lot of great memories about fishing the waters around Charleston. You're kidding me but certainly one of my favorites would be doubling up. <laughs> I'm not sure what to say. 11 times fishing with John Irwin last time I was here. Not only doubling up 11 times, but doubling up 11 times on top water. You know, every time I come someplace like South Carolina <clears throat> and I get to look at all this grass, and think about the habitat that this provides. Yes. Is amazing, you know? Good, healthy water. Just like anywhere else, during low tide conditions, it's the lowest point the water's gonna be during that tide. As the tide starts to rise, all the bait starts to come with it. And the bait pushes into the grass. And it's not just the bait fish, it's all the crabs and the shrimp. And in these special places, the flood tide offers a really unique opportunity for anglers. This is flood tide fishing. Just getting in on this low lying hard ground and fish right across the top of the high tide in here. It's not something that occurs every high tide. You need about six feet of water or better just right to we can get in here and the fish can get in here. This is beautiful. And as the tide keeps coming up, these fish, we're gonna get more water back in there where those birds are. Yep, and uh, you can kind of see the area where it's open and ponded up in there. That's uh, a real low lying short grass. You can also see the big difference in the grass here versus the grass up there. That's that firm, hard ground, uh, a lot of crabs in there. Um, periwinkle snails, all the life that you need to get these fish coming up in here. Right there, he's moving to the left. He's just right there. Where that grass is moving? Yes. Strip, strip. He's on it, got him. Yes. Wow, unbelievable, Good job, dude. Good job, huh? boy. Oh, what a <laughs> sick! Are you kidding? 
Hang on, there's another fish there. That was unbelievable. Look at that tail. Look at that tail. Your turn, buddy. That's what we're doing. That's what friends do. We take turns. That was a really, really unique to be able to get out here and wade in this, you know, low country marsh, the grass. It's not something I get to do very often. I spooked him. That my fly is not sinking. You had another one right there? Yeah, he was right there. Realize that when you're fishing a flood tide in all of this grass, the fish has got his head buried down. There's a lot of other things that are preoccupying him. It's not always easy to get a fish hooked up. The cast needs to be precise and the strip just right. Nice job, buddy. The Obsession of Carter Andrews is brought to you by Mercury, Go Boldly, CV Boats, Lead the Way, Ray Marine, Simply Superior, Power Pole, Shallow Water Anchors, White's Tackle, Fish and Live Longer, Shimano, Power Pro, BKK Hooks, Hook Your Dream, and by Yozuri, Fish the Best. I'll never pass up on an opportunity to visit Charleston. I love the history, the culture. I enjoy spending time with my good friend, John Irwin. But the opportunity to fish a flood tide, that's what it's all about. Nice job, buddy. Lovely bird, man. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, this doesn't, this cue, doesn't get any cue, more. Cue the birds. Here mm. we are again. To be able to come spend time with you again doing this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> oh, well done. Outstanding. I just, you know, to think that these things are slinking around in this grass and <laughs> I mean, that's that's how deep the water is. And his tail was literally, he was straight up and down. He was grubbing. He was grubbing. Mm -hmm. mm. Porterhouse pork chop. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> now the question is, do you want to throw my crab? Right, I know, yeah. I got to catch one on this. I tied it this morning. Oh, you did? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's well, kind of a, an old color. That big one down there on the corner? Yeah. Let's keep going. That was, he was wagging. With every tide cycle, some are higher than others. This tide that we're having is gonna be a big one. So our window for fishing in the grass is gonna be extended. There are four fish up there. You see the two in front of you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> we just keep walking further down this strip and seeing more and more fish. And right now we've got four fish tailing spread out in about a 100 square foot area. As an angler, one of our favorite things to do is sight cast to a specific fish. <laughs> I was really surprised at exactly how many fish we're finding back here. That was beautiful. He's fishing kind of a floating fly with a piece of rabbit strip up on the surface. That was a big surface eat. I mean. <laughs> This is you know, a really unique thing for anybody that enjoys sight fishing for redfish to be able to come out and wade these uh, flood tides. But like everywhere else, it's getting more and more crowded. I mean, the traffic that we had this morning coming to the ramp was out of control. But now look, we're out here and there's nobody around. So. so. Got it. <laughs> Two spotter, fish. look at that. And the blue on their tail is what? So um, it's a see. lot of iodine in their diet. You know, everything that we eat has um, iodine in it more or less, but it show, I think, uh, you know, talking to a couple biologists, that's what shows up in that tail. <sighs> Very good, buddy. Look at that. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, just Here's your other fish, man. He's going to town right here. Outstanding. <laughs> yes. 
There are some interesting clues as you're fishing the grass. Okay, so the, this short grass Firm is bottom. an indication of harder bottom. Exactly. And the crabs like that harder mm -hmm. bottom. We're looking to target that kind of grass. This is where they're actually gonna be actively hunting. You that got is, the spot now, buddy. Dude, you that got is the just spot. so sweet. You got the spot. That is just so sweet. Knowing that spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look at that blue on that tail. The iodine. Look at that. They're kind of cookie cutter-ish in here. Uh, good, I'll take them. I'll take cookie cutters all day, buddy. <laughs> Look at that tail. That one's really got the blue. Wow. Well, we found the um, sweet spot. So that is about the average fish you find in, in here? No, no. Oh, every time you get some bigger ones. Oh, absolutely. Uh -huh. I'm kind of surprised we hadn't seen uh, 10, 12, you know, up to 15 pounds in oh. here. He's ready. Boom. Very good, sir. Great casting there. <laughs> Great casting there. I just absolutely love that. Flood tide in the low country is a uniquely beautiful thing, but then low tide gives you a whole nother perspective. This is a great example of what these massive expanses of, of grass areas look like at low tide. You know, you've got this little creek system that fills in here. That's what the water comes up, it's going out of now. You've got all these oyster beds, you've got all the crab holes. I mean, this is the habitat of everything basically from north of Jacksonville up through Georgia and South Carolina. This is the life of these inshore estuaries. One way or another, this is a great example of what you see when this is all flooded or what you don't see when all this is flooded. South Carolina has a lot of fishing opportunities. Yesterday was pretty unique fishing the flood tide, but today is a whole nother world of opportunities. So we're gonna switch it up a little bit today. We kind of have the weather to go offshore. Right. And you and I have been talking about cobia for a while. Between the cobia and the tarpon that you have that stage here in South Carolina, I mean, one of the two, hopefully, if the weather kind of stays like this, but you know what? It was supposed to blow 20 yesterday. Yeah. So it's forced us to stay inside. Right. And it was beautiful yesterday. I think uh, as the day progresses today, it's gonna switch around again and kind of calm down. John has been talking about his cobia fishing here quite a bit. You know, he tells me about days that they'll show up at some of these artificial reefs and, and see 15 or 20 or even more. They might not be floating on the surface when he gets there, but soon they're coming up. I mean, this is artificial reef as good as you can find. I guess they're like three or four. Actually, it looks like six or eight wrecks out here. All right, I'm on. <laughs> Cubby, little guy. All right, settle down, buddy. I'm gonna let you go. You're a little short. Nice Aren't work. they beautiful? I mean, that's one of the prettier fish. They're all pretty, every fish is pretty. They've all got their unique markings and without a doubt the cobia, there's a good example of those spines that'll, boy, they'll smoke you right there. Whew. There you go, buddy. As you look up and down the coast of South Carolina, there are quite a few areas that have artificial reefs. Fish on, fish on, two fish. They're making it really friendly, available to all anglers. This one may be 36. Uh, 
No, he's not. John was telling me that there's just a really good program out here with artificial reefs that South Carolina has done. And it's the reefs even marked with a buoy over here. So people that maybe don't have electronics, they can find it. But I mean, our bottom is littered with fish. There's no doubt in my mind that there's some good ones in here. It's just gonna be working our way through these other fish. It's crazy what's, what's down here right now. Here's your daddy. Settle down, buddy. <laughs> BKK's doing what it's supposed to do. Hey! Up, up. <laughs> wow. Good. That didn't take long. No, sir. I don't know how many cobia are on this artificial reef, but there's one thing I do know is there are a lot. They might not be the biggest cobia, but there are probably some really good ones there. Little guy, pale little fella. He's too small. <laughs> Just about any artificial reef anywhere you go, if there's bait there, they're gonna be barracudas there. Woo! <laughs> that was good, that was fun. Yeah, good. The other thing about a barracuda is they just can't resist something silver, shiny, and fast. Barracuda. Another species is found on wrecks all the time. The Obsession Gear Guide is brought to you by White's Tackle. The Obsession of Carter Andrews is brought to you by Z-Man, the science and art of fishing. Grundens, we are fishing. Costa, see what's out there. Yeti coolers, built for the wild. TH Marine. Vatlin Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. It's always a whale of a deal. Obsession Outfitters, enjoy the experience. And by Dale Sorensen Real Estate, the right move. Additional support provided by the following brands. There are a lot of things that I enjoy about fishing either natural bottom or an artificial reef like this. Bait fishing, yes, can be very, very productive, but there are also a lot of other lures. Some of the soft plastics made by Z-Man can be fished just about anywhere in the water column. It's either or, hitting the bottom, Carter, or something just popped it. Come on, buddy, get that fish in here. I'm gonna get this out of the way. Come on, make this happen. Yeah, that's all the matadors again. Yep. Now this is really effective. Grouper eat it. I've had snapper eat it. Definitely cobia eat it. And the durability of these is unparalleled. It felt like a good one. I think I kind of winged them a little bit. I mean, you're basically making your own. You can pick your own colors because yeah. you have all those different color skirts. Oh yeah. And then you have all the different color tails. And if you like that curly tail, that's a scented grub oh, yeah. that they have. And it's just pretty awesome. There are a lot of different species that live on these artificial reefs, but there's one that's found all up and down the coast that for anglers that are hooked up to them, they know they've got a battle on their hands. Oh. 
probably his gill plate's the best place. Woo! That's it! God, don't make me do that again. <laughs> you can find Amberjack on almost any wreck in the Atlantic. It's a great, great game fish. Good eating fish sometimes. Depends on if they're worms or not in certain areas. Yeah. But um, you want to talk about pound for pound in a great fight. You know, I don't like them much bigger than this. They're a little too hard to deal with, but this is a perfect size to do what we were doing. Catching it on a nice jigging rod, speed jigging. I love it. I'm going to get him back in the water. Did that hurt a little bit? Huh. <laughs> Well, day one of South Carolina was certainly everything that I hoped it would be. <laughs> and then day two, out here on the reef, was really, really unique. I had hopes for the tarpon fishing, but to tell you the truth, unfortunately, it just didn't pan out. But there is one other thing I'd like to do before I leave the low country. You guys think we're at the right place? There's one, two, three, four, five, six shrimp boats tied to this dock. Good luck, yep, thank you very much. Bye-bye. I'm a good old Southern boy at heart, and anytime I make it to a destination like Charleston and this low country and the feeling of it, you know, the hospitality, the food, the fishing, the scenery, my good friends. This is just another one of those adventures that I can say was special. One that I'll remember. Thanks, John Irwin.